Hello and welcome to The Insider. I'm Lisa Adams. Today we'll be talking about Edinburgh University's Master of Fine Arts program. It ranked number one in a list of the 25 best MFA programs in the entire nation. Pretty cool. My guest today is Terry McKelvey, who is Professor of Art at Edinburgh with a focus on painting and drawing. Welcome. Thank you very much. So first, tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, we mentioned what your focus is, but mm -hmm. what courses do you teach, and how long have you been at Edinburgh? Uh, well, I've, uh, I've been teaching at Edinburgh for about 22 years now. Uh, I came here all the way from Maine, uh, where I had been living and doing a little teaching. Um, and in the time I've been at Edinburgh, I have taught both in our undergraduate BFA program and in our MFA program, our Master of Fine Arts program. Uh, I teach, so I teach um, studio art classes ranging from freshman, what we call freshman foundations courses. Uh, those are uh, drawing and design and color theory courses for freshmen uh, to intermediate and upper level drawing and painting studios. And I also teach drawing and painting and uh, an occasional seminar class at the graduate level. So your focus now is in the undergrad program or in the MFA program? My focus is both. I'm currently the, um, the majority of my teaching is in our undergraduate program, but I happen to be the head of the MFA program at the same time. It's a small program. And now I can ask a question I've been wanting to ask my entire life, which is, can you teach someone to be an artist or do they have some raw gift to begin with? Uh, talk about that, especially when you sure. do that freshman course. Can you see then who has the potential to go on in your program and who doesn't? Well, that's an, that's an interesting question um, because Edinburgh is a little unusual in its undergraduate art program in that a student um, can apply and be accepted to Edinburgh without, um, without submitting a portfolio application of images. So we get all sorts of freshmen ranging from um, students who've had very extensive arts experience in their K through 12 education and students who just have this inkling that they want to somehow be involved in the arts. A lot of them, uh, as you may know, come to us because they're interested in either graphic design or uh, going into the animation field. And which is a big program at Edinburgh. Which is a, the biggest program in our undergraduate art department. Probably about half of our undergraduate art majors at Edinburgh are studying to be uh, to work in the animation industry. So even if they're going in that direction, they do need this foundational work. Yes, yes. The philosophy of the art department is that whatever one is going to study, uh, whether it's in a commercial field like graphic and interactive design or animation, or whether it's in a fine arts field, uh, that they receive the same foundational training, which is, is what we call it, which consists of drawing classes, design classes in various dimensions, color theory, uh, and, they also, and they also have uh, some common art history classes that they take so they can contextualize what they're learning. So back to my question, can oh. you teach someone to be an artist? Yes, you can. Uh, <laughs> wow. Yes, you can. I think it, it helps. It certainly helps if one has an innate talent, but a lot of the people that we work with um, come in with pretty raw or undeveloped skills, and we can teach them a lot of principles, basic principles, and even techniques that will improve their skills. Um, it requires a lot of a lot of effort, a lot of um, dedication, and a lot of desire to be better. But uh, we, we have students who make phenomenal progress during their time. And people who came in and you, you might think, oh, this person doesn't have what it takes to be an artist, uh, will leave with very fine portfolios. That's pretty exciting. So what does it mean to have Edinburgh's Master of Fine Arts program ranked number one in the country? This is really impressive. It was quite a shock uh, to a number of the faculty uh, teaching in the program. Um, I don't think you a, should say that. <laughs> well, we're a, we're, we have, for a long time, we've sort of operated below the radar as a Master of Fine Arts program. We have a good 
a regional reputation uh, for excellence as a fine arts program, but we're not well known across the country. And so it came as a surprise that, um, that we were in the ranking, first of all, but then to be ranked number one was, was a pleasant surprise. And so I understand the ranking is based on tuition, median salaries for graduates and achievement, and it's sourced by the U.S. Department of Education. So uh, do you think the fact that you work to keep tuition relatively uh, low at, at Edinburgh is also a helpful factor? That's a huge factor. Um, a lot of students or, or a lot of prospective students who are considering an MFA program certainly look at the cost of the program. Um, and try, they don't want to incur uh, a lot of debt while they're in the program um, because there's not a there's not a direct route uh, linking an MFA degree to a lucrative job. <laughs> you however, said that so diplomatically. Uh, yes. However, however, our our students uh, do extremely well, uh, and it's and it's also a bit of a myth that. Um, you know, I'll say this to all the parents out there who are who have talented uh, children, and and they're trying to talk them out of going into an art program in general at the college level. That that um, there's this thing known as the arts economy, uh, and it's a it's a big part of the U.S. economy. It's people working as arts professionals, and so our art graduates from our MFA program as well as our undergraduate program do quite well. Um, some of them are quite entrepreneurial. A lot of them are still working professionally in the field years after they graduate. And that's what we're training them for. Well, when we come back, we're going to dig in and look at what goes on in that Edinburgh MFA program and how students are selected for it. Stay with us. <laughs> Well, welcome back to The Insider. I'm Lisa Adams. You see just a little bit of art, some ceramics peeking there. We're going to talk about those things in just a few minutes. But we are talking about Edinburgh University's Master of Fine Arts program and its recent number one national ranking for the Master of Fine Arts degree. So again, my guest is Terry McKelvey, professor of art at Edinburgh with a focus on painting and drawing. So tell us about the MFA program. What all is included under that umbrella? Uh, well, there are five different studio disciplines that we offer a Master of Fine Arts degree in. Uh, those are ceramics, uh, metals and jewelry making, uh, painting, printmaking, and sculpture. So we are looking at those on the screen now. So talk mm -hmm. us through each one of these. And if someone is in the MFA program, are they concentrating in one of these areas or do they have to have experiences in all of these? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, they, in, a Master's of Fine Arts program is considered a professional program and at the professional level uh, of graduate study is a time when you really get to narrow your focus. So people who have undergone an undergraduate program and maybe had a more general education with a, with a sort of smattering of studio courses in a number of areas um, make a determination that they want to study one particular thing and so they have that opportunity when they come to Edinburgh to really delve into one of those disciplines. So at least half of their graduate credits that they earn would be in within that studio discipline. Um, so are students spread equally in terms of who you enroll over these five disciplines or is one the hot area right now? Uh, the programs vary in size. Um, part of uh, the, the size of the programs was really determined years ago and it had to it, what it came down to actually was our art facilities some of our art facilities had more space that could accommodate graduate students because each graduate student gets their own private studio to work in and um, so for instance the ceramics uh, program the MFA program at Edinburgh is the largest area they have they also have a, a national profile among ceramic studios so they tend to uh, they tend to attract applicants from all over the country although all of our programs attract applicants from all over um, they tend to uh, on average draw from the widest geographical area 
um, they have um, a whole building pretty much set up filled with graduate uh, graduate ceramic studios. The other programs are smaller to varying degrees and it really depends on how much studio space is available. So when you're making ceramic work, um, are those uh, individual pieces, uh, sets of dishes? I mean, what do people do when they leave that program? Well, there's, there's, um, I'm not a ceramicist, so I'm, I'm hope, I hope I'll, uh, do this represent justice. them, do justice, <laughs> represent them well. But there's generally speaking, there's sort of two tracks um, of work within ceramics. Um, there are there are those who consider themselves functional ceramicists, people we might call potters, uh, who who make who who make vases, cups, plates, things like that, dinnerware. Um, and then there are people who are really interested in clay as a medium, but are but but work more in a sculptural mode. Uh, making what we would call non-functional ceramic pieces. And is that true in the metalwork and the jewelry work as well? Absolutely. Uh, there are there are people who come into the jewelry and metals area who are really um, interested in working traditionally, thinking of uh, jewelry as an as a bodily adornment. Uh, but then there are other people who really consider themselves sculptors who. Uh, enjoy working frequently on a very small scale, intimately scaled sculptural pieces that just happen to be using a lot of the traditional techniques of metalworking uh, that are taught in, uh, in jewelry making. You know, everything lately, it seems, is upside down and on its head in terms of how a digital technology is changing so many of the things that we do. So is mm -hmm. digital technology working its way into the fine arts field as well? Yeah, absolutely. Um, in fact, in fact, to varying degrees, the different programs um, have uh, used digital laboratories um, for helping with fabrication. So for instance, I, uh, in the metals area, uh, there are metal students who will use 3D printing technologies to cast um, pieces or to make molds for, for something that they're going to cast in metal. Um, so then talk about, uh, you mentioned the studios that are there. How do you select students for this MFA program? Um, I asked you before we started taping, so I, I know mm -hmm. the answer, but um, I was surprised to learn that it's not students who come up from the undergraduate program. So how do you right. find the students for this program? Well, we, we um, draw people from different educational backgrounds. In the field of art, um, it's in, in the field of studio art, uh, common practice is that you don't take your own undergraduate students into your graduate program. Uh, art schools want to send their students elsewhere to get a graduate degree. We like the energy and the fresh blood that graduate students bring into our program when they're, when they're working at that higher level. Um, the way that works with our undergraduate students bringing in fresh voices, things like that. And so in this case, you are choosing them based on their portfolio, based on their we work. We are, yes, and, it's, and they, they are credentialed. They have an under, they've completed an undergraduate degree. Uh, they've submitted a portfolio, which we have reviewed and found to be of sufficient quality uh, or you know, shows promise. Uh, someone that we think we can work with who's going to be teachable and is serious about working in the field. So they've shown some dedication already. Well, we're going to take a look at some of that dedication by checking out some of the student artwork when we come back. Stay with us. I'm Lisa Adams. Welcome back again to The Insider. We're talking about Edinburgh University's Master of Fine Arts program, just ranked number one in the nation. And again, my guest is Terry McKelvey, Professor of Art. Your focus, painting and drawing. But you've brought along some examples of work to show from students in the MFA program. So let's take a look. We're going to start with uh, printmaking, I believe. Yep, this is a, um, all of the work uh, that we're showing here is work either by current or former students from our Master of Fine Arts program. And this just shows the 
uh, the breadth of our programming at the graduate level. So this is a uh, print by a current student in the printmaking MFA program. So a, much detail there. Yes, uh, and it, it, it's a uh, reduction print, either a woodcut or a linoleum cut print. So that would, uh, that, that particular print would uh, entail hours and hours of labor to bring it to fruition. Yeah, talk about uh, what we're seeing here and why this is an example of good work. Ah, uh, well, it's um, uh, at the at the master's level. One of the things we look at is is technical mastery of the medium, and this is I I think a very good example of um, a student who's really mastered the different uh, range of um, technical. Um, processes involved in printmaking. There's a lot of um, uh, visual textures uh, that are being contrasted in the piece, so a lot of different techniques are being used uh, in, that particular, uh, in that particular print. So now we're going to move on and talk about what is your forte, and that is painting. We Correct. have some examples of uh, paintings. Tell us about these. Uh, these are two small size paintings done by um, Edinburgh Painting uh, alumni. Um, the one on the left is uh, a, a graduate named Robert Katkowski. Um, the one on the right is uh, Josiah King. Um, the, they both look like uh, abstract or non-objective pieces, but in fact the one on the right is, a, is sort of a loosely painted semi-abstract rendering of, um, of his closet and all mm -hmm. the clutter in his closet. Um, they both, I, I think, um, show sort of the range of styles of painting that, uh, that we teach or that we develop in the program. Uh, some of our painters, we, we, we have a faculty, a large faculty of painters at Edinburgh, and a lot of them tend to work in uh, what I would call a representational mode of painting, but are able to speak to uh, and teach in other other modes such as non-objective painting. Oh, that yellow was just so vibrant mm -hmm. in the one on uh, the left just jumping out. I think we're going to move on now to uh, jewelry. They have a really big elegant uh, piece here to show us, so mm -hmm. tell, us, uh, tell us about this. Um, this is done by a student who's currently in her third year in the program. She's just getting ready to graduate in May. Um, I know nothing about the technical processes involved in making that work, but you can see it's highly elaborate. Um, again, uh, the, metals, uh, the metals field is one where um, people, people like to sculpt on a, on a small scale, so they, uh, this is a great example of a piece that um, involves a lot of different techniques of working metals. Probably it has one, uh, more than one type of, of uh, metal involved in the construction mm -hmm. of it, as well as some other items. Some, some very fine there and some... A lot um, of fine detail. Right. And so the last uh, thing we'll look at here is some works from the ceramic side of things. Um, I guess we can show all of these at once, uh, mm -hmm. or maybe go one by one. I'll leave that up to our director. Uh, but again, you said some students are doing um, art through ceramics, and some are doing more functional pieces. So just a quick mention of each of these. Right, and I would say you know that uh, this is showing more of uh, the range of work done done more in the functional uh, sphere of ceramics, um, but. Again, um, these three pieces show a variety of techniques uh, within working traditionally. The bowl uh, with the or the basket, I mm -hmm. should say, is an example of uh, hand building techniques um, and has um, some different glazes on it. It uh, looks like a luster glaze is uh, along with a high fire glaze. Um, the the cup and saucer, I believe, is an example of uh, what's known as a salt glaze. And the third piece, I can't really uh, tell you with any sincerity what type of, of glaze that is. It's more of a finish to it. And it, it has yes, exactly. A feet. 
Yes. <laughs> uh, and a lot of surface detail that might not be showing up on the camera. Exactly. Well, when mm -hmm. we come back, we're going to talk about the placement part of mm -hmm. uh, this for students in the MFA program, and it might surprise you. Stay with us. And welcome back. Again, we've been talking with Terry McKelvey, Professor of Art at Edinburgh University, all about the award-winning MFA program there. So talk about, uh, you know, part of this recognizes salaries, and you mm -hmm. said Edinburgh students are doing pretty well. So what do most students do after they graduate with this MFA? With an MFA degree? Well, they work, they work within the arts economy. Uh, the, the most obvious thing that they do is they um, they maintain a professional studio. They continue to make art in whatever discipline it is. And sometimes they'll change disciplines after they've gotten a degree. We have a, um, someone who graduated about 10 years ago with a painting MFA who's now working as a conceptual photographer in Chicago, for instance. So that, that was unanticipated. But, um, uh, but they, they tend to continue making work in their field, exhibiting work. They also um, work as arts administrators. Uh, they work, a lot of them go into the field of teaching at the collegiate level. Uh, we, our program um, is very good at turning out people who are financially successful. We punch way above our weight is I, how I would describe it. So when someone wants to go on to teach or teach at the college level, it's really typically because they've been inspired by some of their own professors. So yeah, that's I think a, that's true. That's a yeah. feather in your cap as well at yes, Edinburgh? It is. Yes, it is. Um, and we give them, uh, we, we prepare them exceptionally well for teaching uh, while they're in the program. So they, uh, again, they have an excellent track record of finding employment in that we're, field. We're almost out of time, but I just, I can't skip this question. Um, Edinburgh seems committed to this field of art mm -hmm. uh, in spite of the challenges right now for higher ed. Um, obviously, that's something that must be pleasing to you. It is, and we're very proud of our, the campus's heritage as an arts school. Uh, in fact, this year, uh, the art department is celebrating its 100th year as, a, as an academic department of the university. Uh, there's not a lot of art programs that can claim that. Um, and we're also one of the biggest departments, which makes us a very strange animal because we've got over 500 students in our undergraduate program. Uh, we have, um, of all the art schools I know of in the state of Pennsylvania, our undergraduate art department offers the greatest breadth of studio areas that one can study under. So last question, just uh, quickly, if people want to know more about the art department or prospective students to visit, what should they do? Well, they can come visit Edinburgh campus or they could go online. Uh, and look us up at edinburgh.edu, or uh, they can look specifically at the art department at art.edinburgh.edu. Well, I think we've all learned a lot today about Edinburgh's art program and especially the MFA program. Thank you for joining us. And uh, as always, if you have ideas that you'd like to explore on the Insider, just email me at ladams at wicu12.com and join us again next time for the Insider. Thanks for being here. Thank you very much. Thank you.